As a matter of fact, what Steve did is he was interested in doing a, a dissertation on coal, went to a, a, an institution famous for studying coal, uh, Penn State, and then asked, okay, of all the coal seams that you're familiar with in the United States, what's the best example of a marsh produced coal? Mm -hmm. And they directed him to the Kentucky 12 coal, and that's what he did his dissertation on. But when he looked at it, he found a flat base, a flat top, and besides that, even seats in it, thin layers of shale in the middle of the coal with flat bottoms and tops to even those thin layers and pieces of bark in the coal. And he concluded, I can't explain this in, the, in that in model. Standard way. So what he did was develop for his dissertation a new model. If this log mat blew away, you could have a layer of, of bark and then a layer of mud could come in, an inch of mud could come in place and cover mm -hmm. the, the bark that's already there. Then the log mat can float in, deposit more coal, mm -hmm. float back out again, get another, another thin layer. layer of mud, and he could repeat this any number of times. Uh -huh. Perhaps as much as the 120 times you got coal seams in the Illinois Basin, for example, wow. as you float yeah. this back and forth. And he, he defended this interpretation of the Kentucky 12 coal seam for his PhD dissertation, and it was accepted. And of course the comment was something like, well, we just, I guess, we just happened to find the one coal that, that uh -huh. has those characteristics. A wild theory. But all the coals I've ever yeah. seen have those same characteristics. Mm -hmm. Flat mm -hmm. bottoms, flat tops, and it just can't be explained by these marsh theories. Yeah.